Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thank you for joining us for another video, where today we are going to be pulling apart the flaws in one of Flat Earther's favourite formulas, 8 inches per mile squared, which Flat Earthers are convinced proves the Earth isn't a globe. But in reality, all it really manages to prove is that Flat Earthers don't fully understand what it's calculating or where its origins lie. But if you want to find out where the origins of something lie, then you could try using my heritage. A few of my family have already actually used it previously, so I was excited to try it for myself. Simply add in the relatives you know of to your family tree, and then my heritage's range of features will help you find relatives that you don't know of. They give you access to over 19 billion historical documents of things from birth, marriage, death certificates, to sensor records, and so much more. And don't worry if going through all of that sounds like quite an arduous task, because my heritage helps a lot. It not only looks automatically in those records for your known family members, but it has smart matches and instant discoveries. These will look for members of your family tree in the family trees that other people have already created for potential matches, and then allows you to update your records with their details. And in less than a minute, the Instant Discoveries tool was able to add in over 40 extended relatives to my tree from somebody else's. It's given me an entirely new tree for one of my great-grandparents' six siblings. My Heritage also offers a range of photo features too, allowing you to colorize and enhance old photos of your family, like this one of my grandparents on their wedding day, with some quite incredible results, and even a feature to animate photos as well. Start your family tree today by signing up for a 14-day free trial using my link in the description, and as an added bonus, if you choose to continue the subscription on afterwards, you'll receive 50% off. Flat Earthers love using 8 inches per mile squared as apparent proof that the Earth can't be a globe, except they seem to have some misconceptions about how the formula works. Although to be fair, Globers have some misconceptions about it too, with the whole it's a parable of formula, not a circle comeback. And I say that as someone who has stated those misconceptions myself, but I'll get onto that in a bit. The argument that Flat Earth has put forward is that 8 inches per mile squared measures the curvature of the Earth, so if the Earth is a globe, then we should see objects disappear at a rate of 8 inches per mile squared. So, 1 mile would be 8 inches of drop, 2 miles would be 32 inches, 3 miles 72 inches, so on and so on. So by 60 miles, the calculated drop is 2,400 feet, or 731 meters. They then use examples like photographs of cities like Chicago being viewed from locations 60 miles away and the city skyline is clearly visible and yet the tallest building in Chicago is the Willis Tower which is only 1,450 feet or 442 meters tall or 1,729 feet slash 527 meters tall to the tips of the poles. Now, there are a few clues straight off the bat as to what is wrong with 8 inches per mile squared as a formula. First and foremost is there's no variable for observer height. Obviously, on a globe, the higher you go, then the further your line of sight can go before it collides with the surface of the Earth. And as we can see from this diagram, viewing objects further away causes our line of sight to dip towards the horizon. Now, I've had many Flat Earthers trying to argue that the horizon rises to our eye level and that that is proof the Earth is flat, except that simply isn't the case. There's actually a great experiment done by Mad Melon 101 who takes a U-shaped container filled with liquid, starting at sea level and then climbing progressively higher in altitude. And you can see, the higher up the container goes, the lower the horizon sits below the water level. Which means that if the horizon is actually rising to our eye level, then the water in the container must be bending upwards above eye level. Which isn't a good argument for flat earthers to try using. Instead, what this proves is that the horizon gets lower and lower below eye level. It's just the drop is quite small, and we naturally have no way to reference it. Our eyes can't naturally gauge where horizontal is when we're looking out to sea. We just naturally dip towards the horizon. 
For that, it means that the object won't actually begin disappearing from our view until it's reached the horizon, and the horizon distance depends on how high above sea level the observer is, none of which gets accounted for in 8 inches per mile squared. 8 inches per mile squared suggests that objects should have 8 inches hidden when they're a mile away, and yet for the average height person standing next to the sea, the horizon is more than 2 miles away. In reality, because our observation point is higher than sea level, even with our line of sight sitting slightly below horizontal to look at the horizon, for objects travelling away from us, the bottom of them will rise up to meet our line of sight at the horizon and only then begin to disappear. What 8 inches per mile squared is calculating is a drop beginning straight away. Now if you plot out 8 inches per mile squared starting from point zero zero where you're standing, you find the curvature immediately begins dropping down the y-axis rather than rising first and then falling. That's because ultimately 8 inches per mile squared is based on the idea of a tangent from your position at sea level. I.e. if you were to place a spirit level on the ground next to the sea and then imagine a straight tangent running from that straight out, the Earth would then be constantly curving away from it. It's calculating that if you were to travel along that tangent line for 60 miles, you would then have to drop down 2400 feet to reach the curve, which is nothing close to how our vision works. Therefore, trying to use it to calculate what we should be able to see is like trying to use pi r squared to calculate the area of a rectangle. The closest that 8 inches per mile squared could come to being useful is if you started it at the horizon. If you imagine you're looking out to sea, your line of sight is just meeting the curve of the Earth at the horizon and then begins to fall away. But that line of sight would then form a tangent to the horizon and at sea level and the curvature beginning to fall away from it consistently. However, even then the formula is not accurate enough for comparing observations because our observations are through atmosphere, whereas 8 inches per mile squared is merely calculating a curved line. And the atmosphere can make quite a difference to what we can see due to refraction. I know at this point flat earthers are probably thinking, oh here we go, refraction, the answer for everything. But the simple fact is, light does change direction as it passes between different density mediums. If it didn't, you wouldn't be watching this video right now because my camera wouldn't work and neither would your eyes. Lenses rely on refraction of light moving through various pieces of optical glass and air to be able to direct the light to the right place to form an in-focus image. And while granted the atmosphere doesn't have quite the changes in density as there are between air and glass, there is variations in density as the altitude changes. So as light gets closer and closer to the ground, the density of the air it's travelling through is increasing, which causes it to bend slightly downwards. When we're seeing the likes of buildings from a city skyline miles away, we are seeing light that has reflected off those buildings and is travelling towards us. It's not reflected off in a single stream, it reflects off in many directions, which is why we can see those buildings even as we move around to different places. The light that we are seeing at a given moment is that one particular stream of light that's travelling slightly downwards into thicker air, which is then causing the light to bend more downwards. It's passing just over the curve of the Earth rather than hitting the ground. Now without atmosphere that light would simply travel in straight lines and have probably sailed way over our heads, but due to that slight refraction from the atmosphere, objects can then be seen from slightly lower vantage points and refraction is affected not just by air pressure, but also things like humidity and temperature. Higher humidities mean more water vapour, which is denser and so causes more refraction. And we've probably all seen the, the effect that temperature can have on refraction. If you've ever seen heat haze above a long stretch of tarmac, such as a road or a runway. Here, for example, is footage of planes landing on a very, very hot day. Now, that runway is bone dry. And yet, it's just so hot from the sunlight that the air above it is becoming incredibly warm to the extent that the light reflecting off the plane towards the runway is refracting to such extremes that we can see a clear reflection of the plane on the tarmac as though the tarmac were ice. 
and we know it's not a wet runway because if it were, then there would be spray being kicked up from the wheels and the engines after the plane has touched down, which there's not. Now this is just insane amounts of refraction, you know, it's even making it look like solid engines sitting a few feet off the ground are actually melting into the tarmac. So atmospheric refraction is certainly a variable which we can observe, but 8 inches per mile squared doesn't remotely factor it in. Even without refraction though, 8 inches per mile squared isn't really the right formula for measuring what we can observe in the distance because it's not accounting for observer height or line of sight. So when flat earthers use websites like earthcurvature.com, they don't understand that what it's calculating the rate of curvature of the earth, not how that curvature is going to impact our line of sight. There is Omni Earth Curvature Calculator, which uses more appropriate formulas to account for observer height to then work out the distance to the horizon, but the makers of this calculator themselves state on their own website that the calculator doesn't account for refraction. So this would be confirming viewable distances on an Earth with no atmosphere. These are merely simplified calculators to act as rough guides. You can't really use basic guides when you're then trying to do experiments that require accurate calculations to reference against observations. And that ultimately is what 8 inches per mile squared is. It's not an accurate calculation for what you should be able to physically observe. It's merely a simplified guide for how curved the Earth is. And this is where the misconception about the parabola formula comes in as well. When I first started watching Flat Earth videos, I quickly came across Professor Dave Explains videos, and in one of them he points out that 8 inches per mile squared is essentially an x equals y squared formula, which isn't a formula for a circle, but rather a parabola, so can't be used for measuring a curve. And I've seen many people use that same remark as a comeback to Flat Earth's claims relating to the formula. Like I said, even I've been guilty of making the same statement. The reality is though that while it is a parabola formula rather than a circle, you can change the rate of curvature of a parabola by changing the relationship between the x and y values, and it's possible to have a parabola that has an initial curvature rate pretty much identical to that of a circle with a radius the size of Earth. 8 inches per mile squared is much easier to do mentally than the actual formula for a circle, and it's able to hold true over relatively short distances. So it works as a good guide for rate of curvature. The problem is it's not actually calculating anything related to what we should be able to observe because our observations aren't taken from sea level and aren't based on a tangent line. If you want to accurately calculate what you should be able to see beyond the curve, then you need to use calculations that not only account for observer height and line of sight, but also account for refraction just like Advanced Earth Curve Calculator does. And remarkably enough, the results from those calculations correlate with what we observe in reality. How strange. Anyway, that is going to draw things to a close. Thanks once again to MyHeritage for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed it and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.